Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey! Hello, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, with a little program that we uh, engage in uh, certain things like uh, what we call the Citizens Panel, but you'll find out what that's all about in about uh, 25 minutes. But right now, uh, one of our very popular features and one of the very popular people we like talking to. Uh, and uh, I never thought I would say that because, well, she's an ex-wife. Well, who do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, it's my ex-wife and the woman who kept my last name, but not the real one that I have, but the I fake one that I... kept your first name as my last name. You kept, you kept what? My, you kept my... Your first name as my last name. As your last name. Uh, oh, yeah, my first real name as your yes. last name. I guess you could put it that way. How you doing, kiddo? I'm doing fine, finally out of the hospital. <laughs> yeah, now, but since we talked to you last, you were back in the hospital. Now, don't, don't get terribly worried, folks. It was a bunch of stuff that was a pain in the ass, right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I was in twice, two weeks in a row for four days each. Yeah. <laughs> because there was an internal bleed, and uh, they put a stent in me. Who knew there were stents that weren't about hearts? I didn't know that. Yeah. And then a clot formed, but not one that could go to the brain or the lung, fortunately. Yeah. But they still had to go take that out. That was the second week, and figure out what to do with me. And now I am on blood thinners, and I wear this little bracelet the doctor said I should wear. It says blood thinning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, if I got hit by a car, then they know that I could bleed to death. They better do something quick. Like what? Stop the bleeding. <laughs> I mean, but how? If your blood's too well, thin. Well, however they do when you get hit by a truck. I don't know. You mean to say to me that all those baby aspirin I take every day don't thin my blood enough? No, it's different for every person depending on what's happened to you. I took a baby aspirin until this started, and now... I jab myself with a needle twice every day for a blood thinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> I have a new skill, Alex. Oh, you have a new skill? No, I'll tell you, my wife has the same skill. She got allergies, so her doctor said, well, you have to shoot up every day. with Whenever you're itching, you shoot up with this stuff. And they came, had her come in for shooting up lessons. Me too. I yeah. had them before <laughs> yeah. I left the hospital. Yes. I think the only reason they give you the lessons is they could tell you, well, here's how you do it. Boom. But most people have to get used to it. The idea of inoculating yourself kind of... It's not, it's not the best thing anybody ever tells you. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't imagine how uh, diabetics live their entire lives having to constantly test their blood do you know, and do insulin. Uh, the brother of a friend of mine, they both live in Israel, was visiting New York many years ago. Yeah. And his brother, who's a friend going back 30, 40 years, said, oh, you really should look up Ronnie. So the guy came to my house, and we're sitting there, and we're talking, and we're catching up with life and everything. And he says, oh, excuse me just a minute. And he pulled something out of his jacket pocket, and it was a syringe, and he slammed it in through his jeans into his thigh, and then put it away and said, okay, we're all right now. Having to do with his diabetes. <laughs> Man, I couldn't, uh, well, I guess after a while you just get used to it. I'm, I'm sure you're used to it now. Well, it's been about a week and a half, and uh, it took me a week. I... I do it at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., and I have to set alarms because it's not a habit with me. It's not something I've ever done. But they're terribly clever. I mean, I don't have to get it in the vein. It's just get it into fat. And have, right. And, of course, then they starve me in the hospital, so I don't have any fat practically. But um, but there's some there to find. Um, and it's the first couple of times it was really hot. You know, you hesitate, you hesitate. But these syringes are terribly clever how they're made. They're just there and, you know, made with and the stuff, the, the liquid is already in them. Right. And, but I have my own little biohazard dis red disposal unit now for that. Oh, really? Yeah. 
And when you're done, you push it a certain way, and a little thing comes out that covers the needle so nobody will touch it accidentally and get poked. And then I put it in my little biohazard little thing. You know, they're big ones at the hospital, but mine yeah. is a little one. And anytime I go up there, I bring it with me, and they'll dispose of them properly. So I'm kind of used to it now. So anyway, see, here, here's the thing. Now, Ronnie does, in case you haven't joined us before when she's been on, has a, a blog called timegoesby.net. You go to timegoesby.net, and it's about what it's like to get old. And it's a, it's a, it's a blog for, for older people to read, but younger people to understand aging, I think, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that I've always said, now people always gripe about my show saying, why do you talk so much about health? And I'm going, because I've got a bunch of old people calling me, and that's who, all you ever talk about when you sit down to dinner. Dinner conversation is not any longer, it's not like, late anybody good lately? You know, it's, uh, what kind of medicine are you on, and what kind of plan do you have, and what, what's your supplemental, and uh, on and on and on and on and on. Well, old people are sicker than young people first, to start with. The older you get, the more... There are diseases of aging, and that's cancer and diabetes and heart disease and Parkinson's disease and two or three more. That far huger numbers of old people get those. So diseases far, I don't have people. any of those things. Well, good for you. My feet are numb, but that's about it. You know, <laughs> I mean, there are a few. What's that from? I don't know. I think it's a nerve in my back, a compressed nerve or something. But outside of that, and a little little arthritis here and there. Uh, I, I haven't succumbed to any of those yet, you know. I, I'm told my heart has a mild stenosis, but that's nothing to worry about. So. What does stenosis mean? Uh, hardening of the, uh, of the uh, oh, okay. heart or artery or something. I don't know. Well, if, you know, if you go by the numbers, by the data, yeah. you know, cancer affects old people in much greater numbers than younger people, and so do all those other diseases that I, that I named. And the thing is, is that up until... This happened to me almost a year ago, uh, the cancer. I mean, um, I was incredibly healthy all my life. By the way, pancre pat years. pancreatic cancer, she hit the jackpot. You're yeah. right. <laughs> you hit exactly. the jackpot on that one. Um, but they've declared me cancer-free for now. And so I'm trying to find a way to live my life without that little shadow. Cancer can come back, often does. Uh, but... To get, I, I don't suppose I can go back to what I was before don't because we, the consciousness is there. It's just there. Don't we all live with a shadow, though, as we get older? I mean, I know I do. Every day I wake up and go, is this the day I'm going to drop dead? You know? Oh, you, you were saying that when you were 20. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> Come on. You know me so well. <laughs> Every, um, By the way, let me, it, let me tell people, you do not want... I could have uh, Marjorie come in here and then... I could leave the room and they would just sit here telling stories about me. Oh, he does that too? Still does that? He still well, does well, that? Yeah. <laughs> Never get two wives together in the same room. Two ex-wives. Have you ever done that? You've oh, got I've had that. Marjorie and me. I've, I've had two wives or maybe two ex-girlfriends, the same thing, uh, in the same room. And then all they do is start slamming you. You just sit in the corner and they keep looking over at you every now and then, you know, with these... Grimaces. Oh, you just reminded me. Yeah. You know, remember 9-11? Yes, I think I remember 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> the guy that I was dating came to my house because he lived in Brooklyn, and he couldn't get there. I mean, it would be hours and hours and hours walking, and he was in Manhattan. So he came, and he knocked on my door and asked if he could... Uh, if he could stay there until he could get back home. There was no transportation. And it seems to me, I could be wrong, you know, memory and old age, but he and I are sitting there talking, and next thing I know, there's a knock on the door. And guess who was on the other side of the door? Who? You! Oh! <laughs> and, and you said you were in the neighborhood, and you lived way uptown somewhere, and couldn't get up there, and so could... Oh, oh you, this was, this near... was the, this was, yeah, well, this was, no, this wasn't... It wasn't 9-11. It was a blackout because I wasn't here for 9-11. Oh, was it a blackout? It was a blackout, okay. yeah. And I was at uh, the office, which was on, uh, uh, where was it, 23rd Street. And uh, it was too far for me to go uptown. There was no 
obviously no subways running because no electric. You can't have subways. So uh, I decided to walk, and I couldn't, call, did I call you first? No. No. I tried to, I think no I tried to call you, but the phones weren't working that well. The cell phones weren't working that well. So I just figured I'd take a chance, and I walked down to your place, and I knocked on the door thinking, hey, can I have refuge? <laughs> well, then what happened yeah. is Stanhope was there, mm -hmm. and he was a, well-known news producer. Very, very interesting CBS. night in my life, by the way, talking with Stanhope. Well, this you is know. what I meant. I might as well not have been there. Oh. You two were telling all <laughs> of your media war stories. Uh, saying, didn't we go out for a walk in the dark and around the neighborhood, too, when we couldn't see anything? Right. But mostly you guys talked about all of your media war stories from all your jobs, and I, I just went to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he taught me a, a lot of lessons also about, about television journalism that he had been through. And one of the main lessons he, he taught me, and that I use to this day when I'm in a discussion, is that in the old days when they used to do documentaries, like the Murrow documentaries and so on, he said, it would, they'd give us eight months, a year to get that documentary together, and now you got to get it together in three weeks. Yes. Well, you can't do a documentary in three weeks. I mean, if you were you doing can't a, do it well in three weeks, ask any nature life photographer, you could not do a nature life documentary in three weeks because you got to wait for at least three weeks for that ant to bring the leaf up the hill. <laughs> you know. Yes. True, so he taught he to, told me all about that, and he, you know what he felt was wrong with with journalism in by that time. That it was just it was it was you had to do it fast. You had to get it done fast, you know. And if you took three weeks on a on a story, that was considered extravagance. Stanhope had a byword that we would go to dinner, or we're sitting around drinking mm -hmm. wine or talking in the evening, usually politics um, or government. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, even then, I, pre-Trump, there was a lot to complain about. And the evening would be winding down, and we'd both be getting tired, and he would always end it with, Ronnie, nothing is getting any better. <laughs> well, now my question is, and this is a question again of age, we say nothing is getting better because we've known another time that was simpler, okay? But, you know, I mean, are the kids today, when they reach our age, going to go, nothing gets better? I'm sure of it. Yeah, I mean... Sure of it. Nothing, it's not that nothing gets better, nothing accommodates our needs any longer. Does that make you sense? You old people's needs? Yeah. Well, I mean, the needs of our age group. I mean, like, I think of when I was growing up, and I, did, I didn't even have television when I first started out. All I had was radio, you know? And then I had the early days of television where there were only three networks, you know? And, and, and people were discovering the medium. And because they were discovering it, they were having little adventures, you know, and the network said, do anything you want to. We don't know what this what this medium does. Oh, you mean the people, the producers and directors? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yes, we know a better day, but for different reasons, probably because of the simplicity uh, of, of the times. But, you know, I, I do think about today, and I do think about kids growing up in this day and age and saying, how do they perceive it? Do they perceive this as being the good old days someday? And I, I hope not. Well, they don't have a choice. This is this will be their good old days, just yeah. like our childhoods are our good old days. If if you think of it that way, I mean, yeah. I just have been fascinated by the watching, being an observer of everything that's gone on through my life and how things have changed. Yeah, um, and it's huge. I mean, and you're right about media. There's so much more media. There's just so there's so much more entertainment, if that's what you want to call some of it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way to keep up. I just saw a story the other day that um, because we're, we really are living through a golden age of television drama, that television critics just, there's, there's so much good stuff, they can't possibly watch it all anymore. Nobody can keep up anymore. Yeah. And uh, I just got, I've, I'm sure you've seen the commercials that, I think it's BBC has a whole new pay service, so they're taking all of their stuff off of Netflix and other services, and they will have their own that costs seven or eight dollars a month. How many seven or eight dollars a month can you pay? I, I mean, I you know. <laughs> well, what they're going to do is they're all going to become very competitive against each other, but people are only going to be able to buy a certain amount. So, I mean, like for instance, I would probably not take the BBC pay service. Mainly because I know ways of getting it for free. But anyway, um, 
I, and I, I do think the more of these there are, the more bootlegging is going to take place because people aren't going to want to have to pay for all those services. Well, you can't. I mean, a normal person can't. By the time you pay your cable bill, although I know a lot of people are un unplugging cable, I haven't figured out how to do that here yet. Um, uh, still, by the time you use $7 here, $9 there, I think I think Netflix is up to ten or eleven dollars a month. Well, I'm paying I'm paying fourteen uh, because I get the high def the four uh, K service, so I get a higher. Is it that much of a difference? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even on your regular stuff, it up it upgrades it and makes it look much better. Oh yeah, four K is worth it, wow. but four K costs as much as the old. TV sets used to cost now. So it's not like it's an added expense. So if your TV set goes, well, the next one should be a 4K. It's not going to cost you any more than you would have paid from the old days for the non-4K. The thing is, television sets never die. As far as vacuum cleaners die, stoves and refrigerators die, uh, television sets never die. I've never had one that died. I just wanted something different whenever I bought one. Well, I had one that was dead on. Years. I had one that was dead on arrival, but you know that can happen, you know. So, uh, but uh, I want to um, ask you a question. But uh, but but you're right. I mean, what they is they have no moving parts. That's the reason why. Oh, okay. I want to ask you a question. Uh, somebody asked me this, and brand new acquaintance I had just been introduced to a, a week or so ago asked me, it was a mid-aged person, mm -hmm. 40s, 40 to 45, said, what do you do all day if you don't go to work? Well, I just had to laugh. But I don't want to answer that yet on the air. I want you to answer it for me. You know something? I, I, I really waste my time. I really waste it. You know, I come in and I potchkey around with the computer a little bit and you know, uh, then I, um, uh, maybe, maybe like I do something like this, I do some interviews about this time of the day with various people. Um, and, and that's my day. I mean, after we're through here, I'm going to get in a cab and go over to Costco and do my <laughs> weekly shopping, you know, um, it's really exciting. I mean, what I was saying the other day on, do you on shop a lot, I shop at Costco, I go to Costco and shop and sometimes my wife goes up with her friend to Stu Leonard's, and I go with them up to uh, Westchester. I'm just wondering if it's genetic, because when your mother visited us once, when we were still married in Manhattan, and she had grown up there on the Lower East Side, no, you she, didn't want she, to go she didn't, with us, no, so she, she, she wanted... She didn't want to grow up in I, the Lower East Side. She grew up in the Bronx. Well, that contradicts something that happened while I was oh, out okay. here on the uh, day I'm uh, talking about. Yeah. Um, but she wanted to go shopping. You didn't want to go, so I have to go with your mother. That woman, who was then in her 60s, I'm guessing, yeah. walked me practically through every street in Manhattan and every damned store. And until I was just, I'm not a shopper unless I need something. And um, But she is. And then we ended up on the Lower East Side, maybe for lunch or a snack or something. And she would point out to me, she would point out that we lived up there and on whatever floor in the building, and there's the grocery store. And we came around a corner, and there was a pickle shop. She said, let's go in here. And we go in there, and she looks behind the counter, and there's a man there who's about her age. And she, go, she goes, Moshi! And he goes, Ruth! And they had gone to school together, and now he was running maybe, his father's maybe, pickle joint. Well, they I, they lived in the Bronx, but it could have been they started out in the Lower East Side and maybe, then moved to the Bronx. The you know, that was upscaling it. But she really wore me out. So I just wondered if the shopping thing was genetic. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if the shopping thing is genetic. I mean, I, I, I'm not one of these people who likes to go shopping, you know. I, I if if, the, if you want me to go shop for clothes, I don't even put the clothes on. I look at the size and hope they're going to fit. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to go into one of those dressing rooms and take my shoes off and my pants off to put on another pair of pants that I don't like. You know, so I mean, uh, I. So how many? How often do you go wrong? Does it not fit when you get home? Well, I'm now married, of course, and she forces me to try them on. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, in in the case of the old days, uh, most times it, 
to me, I was making decent money. So if I went home and they didn't fit, I said, fuck it. <laughs> you know, didn't cost me that much. Most of the time they fit. You know, if there was anything that bothered me is once I had them on, they didn't look that good. You know, they didn't they didn't have a kind of cut I wanted or something like that. But I mean, I've I just I something new that yeah. you wouldn't know anything about. Women's clothes, women's pants, they don't anymore. They don't put enough pockets in her. They put no pockets in many of them. So you always have to have a handbag with you because there's nowhere, no pockets to put anything yeah. in. And it's really, really irritating that all you want to do is go to the store yeah. and you've got to make sure everything is in your handbag. So while I was sitting there in the hospital two different times in the past two weeks for four days, when I actually felt good while they were figuring out how to treat me, yeah. and I had nothing to do except that I was plugged into four IVs and eight monitors and cables going everywhere so I couldn't move around. Um, I just had nothing to do. I ran out, and the book I brought was too short, and I'd finished that in the first day. So I had nothing much to do, just sit around and think. I'm watching all the nurses and the doctors, and, of course, they all wear scrubs, and they have tons and tons of pockets. They have pockets that fit cell phones and pockets with scissors and pockets with who knows what they carry around with them. And so when I got home, I checked online. And I bought myself a pair of black scrubs. Ah. Pants, not the top. <laughs> and I've got a perfect size cell phone, cell phone pocket on the thigh of one leg. And I've got smaller ones where you could put a driver's license or some change if you were just going out to buy, I don't know, ice cream or something. And they're perfect. They're just perfect. I should, I should get myself a pair of those. That sounds like they're great. I do have a pair of them. I'm going to buy more. I maybe I'll get the You're top wonderful. two and make everybody think I'm a nurse. <laughs> well, or a doctor. Or I'll get a doctor's coat and I'll put some phony hospital Did name on it. Did you know the length of a doctor's coat is, has meaning? Does it? Yes. That while you're still in training or... Boy, what you learn when you get cancer. My you God. You have a short one. Well, let me finish. You have yeah. a short one. But when everything's done and you're a full-fledged doctor, then you get a longer coat. Really? That's how it works. Yes. Son of a bitch. I didn't know that. <laughs> length didn't is know still a bit... Uh, length is still matters, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm spending way too much time with medical people when I start to learn things like this, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, so anyway, so I... Uh, and I hate going shopping with my wife because the way women shop, it just drives guys nuts. Just drives them nuts. Because you look at stuff and you look, do I want this? Then maybe you're going to try it on. Does this look good on me? I mean, it's 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 a it's it's a ritual, but with us, it's let's get the fuck out of here. I don't want to have to sit here. But anyway, you were asking about what I do the rest of the day, and the the answer is absolutely nothing because I have nothing to do, you know. And that's okay. I'm getting a little bored of it. Yes. Have yeah. you thought about what you're going to do about being bored? Uh, I think about going out, but then again, you know, I mean, I know how much you love New York, but New York has changed a lot, and it's not the exciting, wonderful place it used to be. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, uh, uh, I don't have the same love for it that I used to have, uh, and uh, I, I don't know what to say about it beyond that. You know, so when I go out, there's nothing to do, you know. And plus, I mean, normally during the day, what did I do? I worked, right? So you really had something to do that occupied your time. So I do my work. I go on at 10 o'clock at night and do this little, little show, which is, you know, more and more making me realize that it is insanity because insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again with the same result. And this is exactly what my life has become. Can I tell you? Yeah, your bandwidth. See, I, I you, you, it's it, very strange. Let me tell. Let me, wait, hold on, hold on a second. While you before you go on, let me just tell the audience: if she starts getting blurry and then comes back clear again, it's because there's some bandwidth on her end that probably is fluctuating. Okay, but we can still see you. And of course, the more blurry it gets, the younger you look. So you know. Oh, well, I don't see. I don't really care about that. Actually, I spent my whole life, as so many women do 
taking off the same 10 or 15 pounds that accumulated and got us too chubby. Yeah. And one of the things that I always wanted were cheekbones. Look at me. I've lost so much weight. I now have cheekbones. I need to gain weight now. You know? uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a um, whole life spent losing weight. Now I try to get, it's much harder to gain weight. Yeah, well, the trouble is that losing weight is wonderful. I mean, I noticed how much weight I've lost, which is 55 pounds, and I looked at me the other day full length, and compared to the way I was, my face is more gaunt. So it's you know, if you and lose weight, we if, if you no, but if, no, but when I was heavier, it it right. looked it, fuller. It fills it, it out. It, it fills it out. Yeah. yeah. So you know, if you want to look young, folks, uh, just get fat. I don't know. Maybe that's the answer. And, and you know what else? Everybody who's young will look at you and say, there's an old person. Yes. Even when you're fat. Right. <laughs> right. But, but I got lucky about things to do because I started the blog before I stopped working for about a year. Mm -hmm. And so when I stopped working, I just segued into a shorter commute from the bedroom to the computer. <laughs> and I still work as much as I did when I went to a job. Yeah. Uh, working on the blog, and it's still, for some reason, after almost 15 years, it still engages me. So, you know, I fill up my days that way. But there's plenty that I have to let go because I don't have time for it all. So. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't it go by when you're griping about age? You know, it just <laughs> flies. <laughs> I don't grow it's it's I'm like life. Happy to be here. It's like life. I'm always amazed when I look back and go, did that many years just pass? You know? You know, somebody sent me an email of a photograph of one of the downtown New York City streets from 1900 or so. Yeah. Or 1910. Yeah. And the headline on the email said, this was only 100 years ago. And it feels that way now. I'm 77. He's about to turn 80. And a hundred years ago, a hundred years doesn't seem as long as it did when we were younger, does it? No, not at all. That's why I'm glad I live in the building I do, because it's much older than I am. <laughs> it's much older than I am. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> see, <clears throat> I'm, I'm gargling now. That's the pollen in the air. Hey, listen, always wonderful talking with you, and let's hope that you don't go back into the hospital so we can do oh, this God, again in no. a couple let's of weeks. We don't. So we can do this again in a couple of weeks. Ladies right. and gentlemen, uh, something that's wonderful you, if you can do it, and I don't know if a lot of you out there can do it, talk to your ex-wife every now and then. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Had a good time. Bye. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. I love talking with Ronnie. I really do. Uh, you know. I really enjoy it, and uh, I hope you did too. I and she'll be with us again in another two weeks, hoping that there's no other problems that keep her from us. Uh, you know that's uh, that uh, she's been um, going through a whole bunch of stuff, but it's been it's been coming out positively, folks. Coming out positively. That's what they said. That's what she said. Came out positively. No, let's see here. Where do we go? Oh yeah. All right here. I've got the Skype uh, set up here so that we can uh, go to Skype in a second. Now I ha all I have to do is turn the damn thing on, and then we sit here and wait and see if anybody's going to call. Uh, and, and I'm hoping that they will and that we will have a really good citizen panel tonight. If you don't know what a citizen panel is, all you have to do is go over to gabnet.net. That's G-A-B-N-E-T dot net, not com, dot net, gabnet.net. And that whole page there is about GabNet. In fact, you won't even miss the show if you're watching it on video because it's playing there right now, okay? And over on the right-hand side of the page, it tells you all you need to know about uh, uh, the process of using the Citizens Panel, okay? And how to get onto it and all of that. Uh, what? Ooh, what, 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 what? I gotta shut my thing off, I forgot. You, you gotta shut your thing off. Shut your, shut your thing off. <laughs> I was so excited. I was actually, I actually saw the little light come on on the Skype. I said, oh, I can beat him before he says it. My, I, I still didn't do uh, it right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know who this is, this is a regular uh, citizen panelist of ours. Uh, uh, a wonderful and attractive 
Scott Boddicker, who, who looks like something out of a Rembrandt painting every now and then. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, the only reason I call in is for the compliment. The compliment, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when you tie it in the back, you don't look that way, but you do look like nah, a Rembrandt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, how are you, Scott? I was good. I was out mowing. You you say you don't have any things to do. You need to get a house so you can go out and mow the grass all day long and, and yeah. take care of sh stuff around the house. Yeah. Well, that that I um uh, I do stuff around the house here. I mean, I have little chores I have to do. Wash the dishes, empty the dishwasher. Uh, I, did, I, did vacuum. I vacuum today ma also. Make the bed. No, I don't do the vacuuming because she hires a cleaning woman to come in once every two weeks. Uh, although we could stand to have this place vacuumed every day now because did you see hello phil did you see this thing on tv about this uh, person i think it was in new jersey it's a viral video and it's fun you should go look for it he took a um, i don't know what is it a a, a thing he was driving uh, like a with a hoe in the front or something it was a it was a a, a vehicle that what can I say? Digs up holes and things like that, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Tractor. A tractor. Okay. Tractor with a, a, with a front end loader on yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he went over to a tree, and then he bumped the tree. And the pollen comes just, just, it, it's like a rain of pollen that comes off of this tree. And uh, that's what we've got here. People are going out to their cars, and there's this yellow stuff all over their car. It's terrible. It's the worst pollen season we've ever had. In the winter, you can't eat the yellow snow. In the summer, you got the pollen you yellow. You got the yellow, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, what the hell? You know, this is really, uh, it's really uh, terrible. And my eyes, I, every day I take a, uh, it says a non-drowsy allergy pill which makes me drowsy. You know, I don't care if it if it's going to take care of allergies, it's going to make you drowsy a little bit. You know, the years that I was affected by allergies, I used Claritin D and yeah. it uh, it worked for me. Yeah, but that puts you to sleep too. The D doesn't, I don't think. No, the D only stands for uh what does it stand for? Hold on a second, I'll show you something too. Uh, 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 it it stands for the D stands for uh Wow, I can't remember now, but it's 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 one added thing, and it's the thing that makes it go behind the counter. Oh, yeah. Um, gee, I'm trying to remember what. Maybe somebody can who's watching. Uh, nobody nobody's writing on the uh, on the uh, chat line tonight. So I they usually they tell me what the D stands for. <laughs> but um, department. Yeah, but uh, I use this. Uh, uh, but uh, and I I really think it does not work. This is the Generic Flonase. Love that stuff. Really? I think that's for colds. The, no, it isn't. No. no, it's for allergies. Huh. Wrong again, Phil. Hey, I thought it was, oh, well, I've got my drink right here. Yeah. But uh, no, I thought Flonase, if you were getting uh, the no, flu or no, cold. No, 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 no. You're, you're, thinking, you're, you're thinking about uh, some other you, stuff. You know, they say that stuff, it, you, it takes a couple of days for it to work. One squirt, man, it clears me right up. You mean it stops you from getting the the, the uh, itchy eyes and all of that? Oh, it just clears out my nose really? and my sinuses. Really? I don't right know away. whether it works or not, to tell you the damn truth. But all I know is I once got a prescription for it, didn't need it every month, kept picking up the prescription every month, and now I got like 30 bottles of the stuff in my uh, closet. Some, man. I love it. Yeah, a <laughs> uh, girlfriend's been trying it, you know. Yeah. But you put two in each nostril. Yep, I haven't done it today, so uh, you know we'll see if this helps a little bit. Um, but well, you remember the cocaine days? You would have loved that, you know, <laughs> squirt, squirt. That would have cleared up my pollen allergies, absolutely. Yeah, R really terrific. Uh, but it, it's you know um, it is the worst pollen season I think we've had in years, and every year they say this year's the worst. So I imagine things are just getting worse and worse and worse. And of course, it's all Trump's fault. So, uh, you know, but I mean, it just why the allergies keep getting worse. And I, it may have something to do with, I don't know. Well, you live in the country, don't you, uh, uh, Scott, basically? Nope. No, you don't. You live in a, 
bona fide well, it's city? A, it's, a, it's a town, but it's, you know, 250,000. Oh, okay. But, I mean, do you live kind of like, uh, uh, how many, how many, uh, how much room do you have for your house? What, how much land is it uh, sitting? I'm on, I'm on a half an acre, and I have about, I have about uh, uh, 20 to 30 trees out here. Okay. So, you so, know. I, mean, I got some, I got some greenery. Yeah. 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 So, you're, you're subject to all of that. Here, what happens is. Nothing. There should be no pollen in New York City. Exactly. There should be no pollen because they're, they're, you know, everything's concrete here, except somebody decided to build a fucking park in the middle of this city, and it comes into <laughs> bloom, and it's only 10 over. blocks away from me. It all blows over from Staten Island. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, it, 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 I'm 10 blocks away from it. Wow. In fact, it's so close to the wild, which... I got lost in Central Park once. I got into these woods, and I actually got lost. I had to use a GPS to get me out of it. And, you know, it's only like, what, three blocks long or something? Three avenues long, or wide? And then it goes down from 110th to 57th. Do they still have the handsome cabs running through the park? Uh, or did I don't, I don't know. I haven't gone in there in a long time, to tell you the yeah. truth. Uh, I hope they kill the horse, get rid of the horses. I think yeah. it's cruel, and I think it. Uh, uh, it I, I think it's cruel. Yeah, I'm well, one of those people that's all for getting do. rid of the horses. What? It gives them something to do. Unlike uh, you, who uh, you know, when you were confessing to Ronnie that you had nothing to do. Well, I had nothing to do. You know, yeah. I'm very close to suicide. I have so little to do. Yeah. Know? Because <laughs> shooting, killing myself would be something to do. <laughs> yeah, just just don't do it on the road. What's my plan for today? Well, uh, we'll uh, post the shows, and we'll do this, and we'll do that, and then at 3 o'clock, I'll shoot myself. Good. That's a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you can always have a future in floor covering sales. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Then you'll really want to shoot yourself. Y yeah, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. No, Alex, Alex, don't, don't kill yourself in the apartment. Go down to Washington and do us a favor. What do you mean? Uh, you a watch favor. See. I can't say it because they, they might be listening. Oh, I see. You're suggesting that I... I, no, I, I suggesting I, anything. Just do us a favor. That I do suicide by cop? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Those guys can't even get themselves shot. The guys who want suicide by cop. Uh, you know, but just tell them you're black. Raise your hands. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one guy. One guy who who did it like he wanted. Went out like he wanted to go out. He he was dying of some some horrible disease like cancer or something. You know. Yeah. And he was going to be dead in like a month or so, and it was going to be a painful death. So he wanted to commit suicide, but he figured the yeah. best way to do it was years earlier. His life had made, been made miserable by a I think a judge in Marin County or something or a, a district attorney. Yeah. So uh -huh. he went out and killed him. Oh. <laughs> and then they shot him. Ta-da! You know, my friend Steve, they called the show. Yeah. He's actually uh, killed seven people. And uh, w uh, one, the, his first one was a suicide by cop. When he was in uh, uh, Porterville PD, mm -hmm. uh, he made entry. and. How you know, do you like live with yourself killing seven people? Well, they were going to kill him. You know, he was... Uh, well, maybe um, then he uh, shouldn't have put himself in that position. Well, that's his job. He was a SWAT. Well, I, you know, but the fact that you know that that's a possibility and then you don't mind that that's a possibility, there's something uh, wrong with that. You know, early on, I decided that if push came to shove, that I was coming home at night and so was my partner. And uh, it, I, I created mental mindset to where I knew I could do it if uh, confronted to the situation. Well, yeah. that's very nice, but I, I just think that I would never put myself in a situation where I had to kill somebody in order to survive. Oh, you wouldn't be a cop. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't be a cop. I wouldn't be a huh. cop for any number of reasons. First of all, I think they're kind of like the uh, the uh, prison guards here. Uh, oh. And, and they're, they're always... Oh. What? I don't think prison guards carry guns for the most part. Only the guys up on the tier. No, no, uh, you're, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, that they're not here protecting me. They're not here protecting Scott. They're here protecting property. Yeah. And that's yeah. all you're here for. 
That's the main thing. Somebody steals something, you, you'll, if they run away with a TV set, some cops will shoot them in the back and kill them. Well, take, take for instance, it's a domestic dispute, and you're called in. Well, and, now we're, uh, we're taking it know, away from what I was saying. Right. Domestic disputes are entirely different situations. I hear police hate them because they consider cool. them the most dangerous calls they that's, can go on. That's how it happened. The guy had the wife hostage. Then he draws down on Steve. Steve shot him. You know, uh, what's he going to do? Why didn't he shoot for the leg? Why didn't he shoot for the arm? Why didn't he shoot for, uh, you, you, know? you 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 need, if you're going to go to deadly force, it's called deadly force for a reason. Uh, you want to stop the threat. If you hit him in the leg, he can still shoot you. So uh, if you're in a position where you have to use I deadly I think, force, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I've never taken a bullet to the leg, okay? Yeah. But I think if somebody shot me in the leg, any hostility I have, wouldn't be rationally meted out in saying, oh, well, now I'm going to shoot him back. I'm going to go, motherfucker. That's because you're not on PCP. But if you're on PCP, some of these guys. Well, where do I get some of that pain. shit? Yeah. <laughs> There's no pain. You know, they, uh, uh, yeah, they, they smoke it uh, a lot of times. They call it Sherms. Remember you spoke, smoked Sherman cigarettes? Yeah. Well. They used to take the Sherman cigarettes and lace them with PCP, smoke it, and they and they call it "I'm going to have a Sherm." <laughs> and that's that's really? what they use. Them. Wow. Okay. Now, where where in the world is Jeff? I can tell he's home now. I can he's, tell by the background. That looks familiar, right? Yeah, Jeff is Jeff is home he, in Connecticut. Uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. How was your trip? It was great. It was uh, quite uh, interesting. Yeah. I've, Santa Barbara, I've beautiful. I've been there like 40 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, it, everybody says it's a real rich town now, and I, and I believe it. Yeah. Uh, only if you want to live there. <laughs> you got to be rich. You know, it's very expensive. Yeah. Uh, it was always kind of an expensive town. I mean, it was it was one of the uh, the ritzier enclaves in Southern yeah. California. Well, people from Los Angeles have second homes there, and uh, oh, in millions. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, right up on the mountains and all that. Yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. yeah. yeah. And, and you can see the water. Yeah, the Just place to live here in New York, of course, is Harlem. That's uh, the place. <laughs> yeah, it's it's getting that way though. It's, it, it's, hello, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. How was your weekend? Good. How was yours? What a, I did nothing. I stayed inside a lot. And, oh, and su Sunday, girlfriend was still sick, and, and she sat in watching movies all day long on TV. And for some reason, it got to be 6 o'clock, and I said, why the fuck didn't we do anything today? I hate that. I, I purged, uh, watched, I uh, binge watched uh, two uh, two things: Flint and the new Punisher series. Oh, I uh, I couldn't get through more than three episodes of the Punisher series. Really? Oh, I, I saw you know all eleven. I think I couldn't get through uh, the first three. After three, I was you know it was like I then went to four and I kept starting four over and over again because other things would occupy my interest and finally i never i never got to four uh, I yeah I, I i enjoyed that and then flint is a russian four four part it's in russian but they have subtitles and it's well i would hope so it's basically the rambo of russia <laughs> and it was pretty good you know, yeah, yeah. It, it was like first blood so it was a, a rip off of first blood uh yeah um i uh you know, I, I she, Marjorie loves binge watching, and I find it a waste of time. You know, unless it's something that I think is going to be really good, because it. You know, I the reason I never read novels. Let me tell you why I never read novels is because of. I said to myself, if I ever started a novel, and then I read the whole thing and it sucked, I had just wasted a week or so reading a bad novel. Now, a book with, like, facts and figures in it, I enjoy those things about history where I can skip through and go to certain parts in history. It's okay. I know it's not going to waste my time, but a novel will if it sucks. Well, I got new Internet service yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I went to a company called Wave. It used to be Astound. Okay. So I have, I, have, oh. yeah, I have one gig down, and... 
thir- uh, 10 up right now, but I'm going to increase it to 30. Wait a minute. At- one, wait a minute. One gig up and 10 down. Yeah, no, t- 10 but up, up and, t- one, and one gig down. So uh, ten, 10 gigs up? Yeah. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on no, a second. 10 meg. Huh? 10 meg up. 10 meg. 10 meg. 10 I'm meg sorry. up and how many down? One gig. One gig down. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because if so, you know. uh, why why is what, it so why is it so uneven? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you, I, you It's not uh, it's not um, uh, what you call it the fiber the glass. But, fiber, not, but, but even the non fiber like the the cable uh, version mm-hmm. here in New York uh, that uh, Spectrum says they're offering two hundred up and down on cable. Yeah. Well, they don't have that out here in California yet, but. Uh, at least in my area, but the uh, the thing is, when I'm watching Netflix, mm. uh, you push the button and boom, it's downloaded. You don't have to wait while the circle goes. Uh, it's it's well, a it lot. It doesn't faster. download; it streams. You, it, it, you don't download the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, well, I find that I you know I I never have trouble that way. You know, a few yeah. times maybe when the, there's something went wrong with the system or something like that. You know, <laughs> but. Um, uh, the, the great part is, is that if you have decent throughput like that, eventually uh, you uh, you get to the point where uh, uh, you could have several people watching Netflix in the house at the same time and not put any strain on your system. Yeah. Like here, I can upload and download stuff, and she can be watching Netflix, and you know, I'm 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 fine. Here, when I upload stuff to the server, it used to take me like when I send my show up to the server. It would take a couple of minutes. Yeah. Now it takes like five seconds. <laughs> Is it yeah. zip? Yeah. yeah. Well, they the guy told me for five dollars more I can get thirty up. Uh, so I said, okay, uh, you know, I'll do that. For how much? How much people. more? Uh, five dollars more. Oh, I'd do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I would do it. Yeah. But it's made. It, it seems to have made a difference in the viewing experience. Oh, of course. And, yeah. Of course. You know, I mean, that's why a lot of these places now in a lot of cities, like, what do you have, uh, Scott, where you are? They probably don't. I, I just have Spectrum, and I, I don't even know what the up and down is. It's it's pretty good. I'm just yeah, pretty much here myself now, just the wife and I, the, all the kids are gone, so we don't have much crowding. Yeah, but it's, uh, you, you don't have any problem with watching Netflix or whatever. Uh, not too much. Sometimes I get troubles, you know, listening to you guys when I got, you know, both computers going and 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 the Skype. It gets a little. Yeah, I'm wondering if that. I'm wondering if that has something more to do with the fact that you're using two computers. It doesn't have to have to have to do as much with bandwidth. I don't know. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. I've gotten to the point where I don't know any of this shit. <clears throat> some guy. Some guy wrote me the other day. And wrote me a letter about. How I could get more listeners and what it would, how we get more listeners is by having smaller citizen panels. And that uh, uh, and then he went into this whole thing about, you know, because I and I wrote him back and I said, look, you know, I uh, my problem is I'm dealing with the technology that's available to me and I use Skype and I can only do I can't limit the size of a citizen panel. I can just hope no more than nine or ten people call me at the same time. OK. But I can't limit it. I don't have any somebody here who's clearing it and hanging up on other people. Uh, and uh, I said it's impossible to do that. And then trade out in the next uh, half hour, have another four people. You know, uh, the, the, the way of trafficking that with me just sitting here doing it is impossible. And he wrote me and said, oh, well, there are things you can do today to be able to do that because people have things with. And I wrote him back and I said, shut the fuck up. I said, I invented the fucking podcast it, and, not, and I know exactly what the realities are of it. But it's not your format. See, the format of normal talk radio is one caller. Uh, one uh, conversation, yeah, yeah. they hang up. You go to the next one. Right. This this is a different kind of format. Right, and it's also a format. I mean, you were the other day brought up. Well, maybe we should do make it a Trump free zone, and I was yeah. against that because my feeling is that this program. Uh, hello, John Perulis. He's there hi, somewhere. Hi, everybody. Wait a minute. We're waiting to get a picture on him. We just, oh, there he is. There. there he is. Yeah. There he is. Anyway, yeah. was it what I was saying is is that. I don't want to make rules like that uh, because I, I, that's not the idea of what I do here. 
you know. Uh, I, I just have a big piece of black tape I put on Phil's image so I don't have to look at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. You put, you, I hope, I hope it doesn't <laughs> stick to the monator. Yeah, well, he doesn't move too. He, yeah. he, he doesn't move too much, so you could put it right over his eyes, you know, and then he looks. Like, you know. <laughs> Unless I wind up in a different square. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, so, I mean, I tried to explain, you know, say to this guy, you know, come on, don't, you know, I know the realities of the situation. I mean. The citizen panel was created out of uh, out of desperation because I didn't want to have to pay to have the phone company install four phone lines, you know. Yeah. And then I said, "Well, I can use this thing called Skype." Hey, wait a minute! The Skype has video, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, hey, people can raise their hands when they're ready to talk. And I'll tell you, that makes it very usable. Okay, so yeah, whatever. Democ Democracy now. A Amy Goodman uses Skype a lot. Yeah, but the uh, problem know, with that right. is you have to look at Amy Goodman. Yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> and listen to her. <laughs> oh God, you know, I st I one time I I started to watch Amy Goodman, and I was good for about a month before I got so fucking bored with her that I just couldn't yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know, so uh, Ray Renati is Ray Renati is joining us. Uh, there he is. I can see all the uh, Californians here haven't been watching the uh, gubernatorial debate on TV tonight. Uh, who was goobing? Who was goobing? Now is who it was goobing? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty funny because they got uh, what three uh, Democrats and two mini Trumps on there. Oh, oh my God! Really? You and, have a ball with well, these who, two guys. Who, who are the uh, debate? Yeah, they, they're they're they, they're like mini Trumps. They're funny wow. as hell. Uh, there's three guys I thought that were Republican. No, the other guy got kicked out because he was a con he was a uh, Nazi. A, a, yeah, Nazi. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, he got kicked the, out at the uh, oh. down in San Diego this weekend. He he was up there. <laughs> he was an Aryan or something. They kicked him out. <laughs> oh really? Oh okay. Well, wait a minute. Is that right? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm being serious well, about this. Look, Trump came out against the uh, guy. Well, forget in about West for, forget about forget Blank about Trump for a moment. No, but yeah. Blankenkamp. Yeah, yeah Blankenkamp. Uh, yeah, he's he's out. Blankenship. Yeah. Blankenship. Yeah. The guy who was in jail, who was a mine owner or something, and he went to jail. Oh, a murderer. Guy's a fucking murderer. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. People yeah. died yeah. mine, and they yeah. shouldn't uh, uh, yeah. keep it up to safety standards. Yeah. yeah. But this uh, this. Uh, John Cox and this Travis Allen, they're, they're funny as shit to watch. And Travis Allen is supposed to be pretty well, good. Who, who's running for oh, government? He's, he's, a, he's a piece of work. I'll tell you what. As a, Demo a, as a Democrat, who's who's running out there? Well, uh, Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom. And, and Villa Ragosa, uh, John Chung, um, and, and uh, I'm going to vote for Delane Easton. The Secretary it's, of it's, School. It's, pretty, it's pretty interesting to see Chung there. He's kind of kind of rising up between all of them yeah <laughs> it's pretty interesting. well the, the the top two democrats and i'm a registered democrat then i'm not trying life. to be do adolf I, hitler they're, i'm they're, trying to keep from yeah, sneezing i know, I know. yeah uh, you know the top two newsom and villagosa forget them uh newsom is a, a slime i don't think yeah, i can't believe i don't so, think newsom's uh, a slime at all well what look what he did to his ex-wife yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's what that's what that's his what his best what, friend, his best friend's wife. Oh, that that went well, on. That was, that was I remember that was a story years ago when I was almost still there. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, one of uh, Alan brought it up. No, uh, the superintendent. What's her name? Brought uh, it up. Yeah, at Delane Easton. Yeah, she brought it up, and then uh, Alan said something about it. He had to defend himself because she he she brought it up about him. And then he brought it up about Newsom. Newsom brought it up about the mayor down in L.A. Then L.A. brought it up about uh, somebody, the other guy, Cox. And, the, and the, they all sat there. And, went, and then Chung said, well, you know, I didn't do anything. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I, the attorney general I, of New York just resigned because he beat up four of his girlfriends. Well, yeah. and now that's that's a good question. You see, I mean, it, it's interesting, Phil, that for a guy who's in law enforcement, you think nothing of the law because you just found the guy guilty without even without. He, wait, wait a minute. Wait, I didn't say he was guilty. I said he resigned because he. Uh, uh, no, uh, you said because he beat up some women. That's right. what you said. He did. But he, he's he, alleged. He, he, number one, he's alleged to. Alleged. Alleged. Alleged to, and yeah. we don't know what the basis of those relationships were. 
Uh, have you ever had an S and M relationship with a woman? No, I have, <laughs> and at her request. At her yeah. request. It doesn't sound like these gals requested it. They actually went. Well, to the they all went. Both went with them for a year. Yeah, but one one or two of them went to the hospital. Yeah, but but they went with them for a year. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, so it's, you have to ask certain questions about whether they were there. It, whether they were there because they were forced to or because, you know, I'm not defending the guy. What I'm saying is he should be given his day in court and he should be allowed the uh, the presumption of innocence until found guilty. Oh, you start I, out by coming on this program and going, oh, he beat up his girlfriends. No, yeah, he didn't. He's he, alleged he, to have beaten no, up his girlfriend. He admitted to the this type of relationship. But he claimed that it was consensual. Yeah, well, there are those kind of relationships that are, in fact, consensual. Okay, so he's an S&M dude. You know, what, what can I tell you? Yeah, well, you know, and uh, he maybe That's should have had every one of his dates. On him. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is, is I'm getting sick and tired of, uh, of guys being getting the short end of the stick on everything. I think innocence is very important to be assumed until proven guilty. And so, therefore, said, we never talk about it in terms of he did this, he did that. No, he is alleged to have done it. Yes, I John. I think gave everybody else the stick. Yes, John. I, I think what I'm going to go with, safe bet, always believe the women. No. I, they I, haven't I, let us down. Man. Well, I, at, I, uh, I disagree. I, I disagree yeah. with that. I absolutely. Yes, uh, Ray. Alex, I, I won't mention his name because maybe you know him and other – but there's a performer here in in um, he's an actor, a prominent one in in the Bay Area. And about 25 or 30 years ago, a girl that he was teaching at uh, American Musical Theater San Jose. I don't know if you remember them. They went out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, accused him uh, accused him of uh, molesting her, and he and he always claimed he didn't do it. And he was fighting it for years. And finally, she came out uh, 25 years later and said she was lying. And uh, just that because she was angry with him. But today, I, I don't think I, 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 to, it, it, it like damaged his career for two decades. And yeah, but today, that's the exception, Ray. I think the no, uh, I don't. I, I did your your, no, your notion, John. John, your I mean, no, your notion that uh, all women are to be believed is ridiculous. Uh, nowadays, I, I think so. I no, think you, it's uh, it's a safe bet. No, what do you yeah, mean? There, now there it's uh, now it's less uh, of a safe bet yeah. because nobody's yeah. asking questions. They're just assuming the guilt of the person they accuse. I, I think women were waiting uh, for the opportunity to, uh, and, and a lot of women were really waiting for the opportunity, and there were other women who were waiting there for the opportunity to get no even with a bad relationship or to uh, uh, to falsely accuse somebody so because all they have to do is accuse them now and the next thing you know their career is in shambles and they may have not done anything well a court of law found against bill cosby who's been a scumbag well that that's for that's the one that we have yes yeah. you know i mean i even even though i uh, i assume uh, that I, you know i i would believe personally that he was capable of all of this harvey weinstein has claimed innocence on everything okay and in spite of the fact of what i may feel this guy is due justice okay and unless somebody gets him into a courtroom and charges him with something i think it's it's wrong of anybody to assume guilt you know based on innuendo and non uh criminal claims but then you have okay. the court of Megyn Kelly, who's ready to cut everybody's dick off. Oh, exactly. But, I mean, but it, 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 this whole thing, this whole Me Too movement has really turned into a Salem witch hunt. Exactly. You know, and I, I, no, I no, just the accusation yeah. gets you hung. Yes. Um, if, if we start to get in the habit of just believing everybody because of an accusation, then we start getting into the era of McCarthyism. That's right. And, 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 and it's extremely dangerous. And it doesn't matter to me that, you know, 80 percent of the time they're telling the truth or 90. That means 10 or 20 percent of the time someone's lying. And so Just prove it. Just prove it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all we're I saying. Mean, it, prove it. With our system, the way it's supposed to be done. Don't you can't you can't convict people. We should have a woman uh, on this show 
because uh, right now it's biased. It's like six guys here. And, Renee, uh, well, that's what I hear in the Bay Area all the time. I, I, I think it. I think it. Respect. I, I one think, in five I, I women think, are it, assaulted in this country. One in five uh, women are assaulted or I in think this country. It's, I think one in four. Okay. It's, so, it's, it's high. One in four? Or is yeah, it one I, in five? Let me check it out. And where yeah. does this statistic Great. come from? I, you know, I'm not saying that women have not been assaulted. And I'm not yeah. saying that it hasn't been a common practice among uh, certain people because they think they can get away with it in this society. Uh, uh, and I agree that women for the longest time went on not being believed in their claims in spite of the fact that they uh, nobody would listen to them. And I agree with that being a, a fault of the society. But you can't go, the, when justice is concerned, you can't just go the other way and say, now all women are right. I mean, how you can make a claim like that, John, is ridiculous. 600 women are insulted every day. In our, our in, did you say insulted? Uh, assaulted. <laughs> assaulted. Sexual assault. assaulted. Yeah. One thing about the courts, you said, okay, Bill Cosby was convicted in the court, so now, therefore, he's guilty. But you look at a case like O.J. Simpson, and he was uh, uh, set free in the court, and... Uh, well, and I guess O.J. Simpson was not guilty then. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, you would have to presume innocence, Phil, if you're going to be an American and well, you're going to believe in our justice system, which you were part of. But I feel uncomfortable thinking that a guy I know was a cop doesn't believe in justice. Oh, I believe in justice, but uh, I don't believe that all justice is fair. I don't believe justice is blind. And yeah, right. I, I had an attorney friend who commented on the O.J. Simpson thing, and he said, if you have enough of money... You could buy reasonable doubt. Well, you know, I, I, I the, best, the best the best the best description I heard of the best description I heard of that trial was is that the police managed to try and frame an, a guilty man, you yeah. know, and and yeah, uh, and right. by by framing a guilty man they didn't get away with it. So unfortunately, in the American in the American justice system, it's not uh, right or wrong. It's how much justice can you afford? If you can afford enough justice, you right. can. You well, can get. And our justice system is wrong. But wouldn't yeah. you agree? Would, would anybody disagree with me that I, I, you know, John saying that all women must immediately be believed is a wrong assumption? No, I'm I'm saying the majority of them. The majority. It's hard, it's hard to say. Uh, all. Especially now. You don't I, I know. Mean, I mean, yeah. you just don't know. I mean, uh, there are there are several cases of women who have made accusations against men that look very suspiciously like she's trying to get even with them for something. Or she's oh, yeah, trying to get something been, out of it. You there know? are people that have been in jail for 30, 40 years that were cleared through DNA evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, if in, in a he said, she said situation, to say that you necessarily believe the he, she said first over the he said is ridiculous. I, nobody should be, uh, give, be given preferential treatment. Uh, the facts should be allowed to come forward and, and the proof to be uh, offered. You know, here's uh, CNN uh, worldwide. One in three women worldwide has experienced sexual worldwide, abuse. Worldwide, I would or I would believe that worldwide. That's CNN. Well, I would be believe that worldwide because in certain societies, uh, women yeah. are treated like chattel. You know. Yeah. You know the uh, men, men. Men are uh, now. I know it's a smaller percentage, a much smaller, but men are also assaulted and harassed by women and it almost never gets reported even if they have to go to the hospital yeah. um and women usually use uh violence more uh, uh, really a uh, uh, deadly violence like guns and things like that against men hmm. I, mean, I, I mean i just read an article and saw something on well BBC everybody gives me a bad today. time when i talk about the time that i was raped by a woman you know yeah. Uh, I was harassed at a job but by my boss she was the ceo of a software company i was harassed numerous times I went to, um, and I never reported it. I never would. Well, I, uh, you know, I talk about the situation in which this woman basically raped me. She came over and uh, she asked if she could stay the night because she didn't want to drive all the way back to San Jose. And I said, fine. I said, but I don't want to do anything because I just broke up with my girlfriend. I'm very depressed about that. And I, you know, I'm not in for anything. In the middle of the night, suddenly I know she's on top of me. And, you know, it, it's funny what people say to me. Well, yeah, but you, you're a guy, you know, you're a guy and, uh, uh, you know, um, 
you didn't have to have sex with her. And I went, have you ever, f no, did you ever know that you can get an erection even if you don't want one? Yeah. You know? And that, you could get that, one from fear. That a situation like that uh, is enough to give you an erection? You know, uh, but I asked her when she was on top of me, having sex with me, please no. And she wouldn't uh, do anything about it. And as a matter of fact, I started kind of crying, to be honest with you. I mean, it was very devastating to me. And, and, the and, 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 and you know, so what do you say about that, John? Uh, CNN further states. Well, wait a minute. What do you say? What, no, forget about for, forget about John. Forget about the statistics. Forget about the year. statistics. I asked you what you thought about my situation. Well, I, uh, I, anytime anyone uh, uh, their personal space is violated or abused, doesn't matter who you are. Do you think uh, the, we have the same yeah. statistics that you're reading to us, available to us, on men getting raped? Uh, yeah, just look at the Catholic Church. No, 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 no. Not, <laughs> now now, now you're, you're, children, you're diverting I, okay, the question. I could look that up, too. I could look up, uh, you know, yeah. uh, U.S. statistics on uh, men getting raped. I'll, I'll do it right now. Or being assaulted by women. You know. Well, we know it's underreported. They know that. We know it's very underreported. Yeah. It's uh, likewise for women. I'm sure that 340,000 uh, oh, figure I'll, of CNN is low. You see, I, 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 guess mean, what, he, I guess what I'm saying, the point is, is that you, you can't convict someone um, without due process of course. because it, it will ruin their life if it's a lie. And, but you know but what's friend, happening, I, though, I Ray? Him with hell. I what, mean, it's just what's dangerous. Yeah, right, what's dangerous right now, Ray, is it's just the mm -hmm. mere accusation yeah. can, can get it people. Used be, huh? It used to be that when a woman would make a, a claim against a man for rape, they kept her identity secret so that uh, she would not uh, be... They still do. Uh, they still do. They if, still if, do. If, yeah. if they want to. Yeah. If they want to, yeah. Which... Do they, they don't seem to do that for men if the man is accused. Um, well, men... men I, I'm worried, and I have the great fear, that men have lost a lot of rights in this country, you know, as a result of all of mm. this. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, this is from RAINN.org statistics. As of 1998, 2.78 million wait, wait, wait. men in the U.S. had been victims and that of attempted or completed rape. 1998? Since 1998, almost 3 oh, million. Since 1998. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. But we never see those statistics being made a big deal out of. And I mean, it is a, a problem for men as, as well as women. Women have, um, uh, have been uh, have underreported because women would not come forward in the old days. Now they're willing to come forward. And the trouble is, is that mm -hmm. in, these, in, in a consensual situation, there are just two people involved. They are in a room alone. And uh, it, 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 it's a he said, she said situation. Um, and how we prove it, we don't prove it by going overboard on one side or the other. The problem is for years, we, the woman came forward against a guy. We favored the guy rather than the woman, and that was terrible. But to then do the opposite now and favor the woman over the man and believe anything she says just out of hand is also wrong. What we want to do is we want to move that pendulum to the middle, not to the other side. But I think uh, in terms of the weight, uh, the weight distribution or the, uh, you know, the acts it's, uh, is against uh, men. Uh, it, you know, I, I was raised in the Catholic Church and look at what has come out in uh, the Catholic Church. I mean, institutional uh, deceit by uh, the leaders of uh, church hierarchy and sheltering. Uh, Cardinal Law from Boston was, uh, he just passed away in Vatican, but he was given uh, uh, refuge and sheltered status there. He knowingly uh, passed uh, known sexual predators around the Boston Archdiocese uh, you know, with full knowledge of what was going on. Yeah. And th those are crimes against young men and they should have been reported and uh to the police and they never were 
Yes, there's a number yeah, of the, Catholics. There's that film, of, you know, just mm -hmm. uh, about that. There's a number of Catholics on the panel. Did you, when you were a young boy, did you ever see or hear of some of your friends being abused by priests? And uh, what no, was... I, I, I never did uh, in my church. You know, we never even heard of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my uncle was a priest, so mm -hmm. maybe uh, that had something to do with it. Maybe I don't know. I, I mean, but. You, these things get around, and I never heard heard about it in, in our church at all. You know? Well, when I was at Bellarmine uh, College Prep, uh, I had two incidents happen to me that were not not horrible, but they were definitely out of line. Mm -hmm. And I reported them twice to the school, and they have done nothing about it. And they asked us to report them. And the last time I reported them, because... It happened again with was somebody it, else. Was uh, it, they ignored me. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Was it a teacher or a student? Uh, yeah, one, uh, both were Jesuit. One was a Jesuit novice. He wasn't a priest yet, and he had, uh, he actually got kicked out of the Jesuits. And the other one was just a guy uh, who was a Jesuit priest. He's he's dead now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was the physics teacher. Huh. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm okay, uh, I, but I, they 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 ignored me, and they defended the guy who was who, the physics teacher who was still living there. They defended them and said I must have imagined it. But the guy who who had gotten kicked out of the Jesuits, they were behind me 100 percent. Oh yeah, he was terrible. That's you know that's one of the reasons we got rid of him. But the other guy was still living on campus even though he wasn't teaching, and they defended him 100 percent. Said I was making it up. Scott, you're Catholic, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you know of any of this going on when you were growing up, or was it something you just didn't pay attention to? Because well, well, well there there was a rumor that the uh, priest that came to our small town came down from uh, a bigger city, Waterloo. It's not mm -hmm. it's, it's like two hundred thousand, and uh, rumor has it he was uh, uh, moved there to be watched closer. I guess I don't know. Yeah. yeah, you know he never did any. I, mean, I was an older boy. I did the whole thing. He he never he never. Of course, my dad would have, you know, killed him probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I at my church when I was a kid, uh, the youth group counselor. He wasn't a priest, but um, he would come up behind the boys and grab them when they weren't looking, uh, and especially the teenage boys and touch you inappropriately and he did it to me once and oh, i was damn. and i yeah. suffered i mean i was su yeah. i suffered for like a year go yeah. and i never told anybody but I, I was terrified going back to these youth group meetings and i was yeah. only 13 years old sure it was horrible yeah and and then my parents have a friend who was a priest up in the in the hills and he had to he's hiding in ireland right now because he was accused of uh, molesting two boys when they were younger. A, of course, my parents believe, don't believe he did it, although I think he probably, you know, I'm guessing he probably did. And, and I think he's being hidden by the Catholic Church in Ireland. You know, before all this stuff became so prevalent, I, I was uh, a reserve working in sexual assault juvenile, and I got a phone call, mm -hmm. and the guy said that he was molested by his priest like 25 years before. And I didn't really have any training or know how to handle it, so I just told him to call the district attorney's office and uh, and farted it off. But, um, you know, the more I think about it, you know, th this guy was opening up and, you know, and asking for help, and I sent him somewhere else uh, because most likely because I didn't know is, how to deal is, with it. Is there, a, uh, is there a time limit on these, on these kinds of... Um... I, think, I think there is, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I don't think any of these crimes, uh, sexual or otherwise, have a uh, 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 statute of limitations. I think they all I, they they all have they all have a sunset. Oh, they definitely do. Uh, the only one, oh, the only the only crime that doesn't have a sunset is murder, I believe. Right, that's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, Cosby they couldn't try uh, many of those uh, cases due to the fact that there was a, a sunset. Or a, you know a, a limit on it. Now, it, does it do you do you feel uncomfortable with the fact that Cosby 
it was a hung jury when the Me Too movement wasn't very strong, and the minute the Me Too movement happened, all of a sudden Cosby is found guilty. That, that's what happens. Look, look at your friend. Uh, uh, you know, you had a couple of friends, uh, Abby Hoffman, and then there's uh, Roman Polanski. And at the timing, well, was uh, she's not, Roman, Roman Polanski is not my friend. I know, I know, but uh, <laughs> Roman. <laughs> you know, it was it was timing. Uh, your friend Abby said that he couldn't get a free a, a reasonable trial. He, yeah, he didn't feel he 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 was. I feel definitely framed. I know yeah. he was framed. He was framed for selling coke. And if he was a Coke dealer, then how come I lent him several hundred dollars a couple of weeks earlier because he didn't have it? He needed it. Uh, but anyway, the point is that I never believed that he was really a Coke dealer. And, yeah. uh, uh, and I, I knew him well enough to believe that. Uh, but he, he uh, jumped bail and just ran off into the wilderness for several years. And when I met up with him, he said, the reason I, uh, I did it, you know, uh, uh, I was with him in hiding. And I, he said, the reason I did it was because I knew I couldn't get a fair trial. But if I waited a couple of years, the heat mm -hmm. behind this would die and I could go back, get myself up. And, and that's what he did. If about, I don't know, he was in hiding for about five, seven years, something like that, you know. Well, but, then uh, uh, Cosby will probably have to appeal his sentence uh, when the mood of the country changes and starts the pendulum starts to swing well, the other way. Well, I, I think that's going to be a while. You know, I mean, in the case if, of Abby Hoffman, you're talking about a singular case in which uh, the uh, district attorneys were uh, trying to get some heat off of their <laughs> off of their bust and were very uh, 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 assiduous in their in their in their uh, whatever. And, and yeah, it, it, and by that time, they had all gone on to other stuff. They didn't care about this. And uh, he came back and he settled for a year, you mm -hmm. know. And I think that he got out after six months. Yeah. But, uh, and he gave himself up. He didn't, uh, he wasn't caught. Well, know? I had a friend uh, who uh, got caught with uh, a large amount, a fairly large amount, I think a pound of marijuana. And this is back in the late 60s and well back in the late act. 60s that wouldn't get you very high so well, i don't think it's a, well it's a yeah but he, uh, well actually it was earlier 60s but he went to uh, attica for eight years wow uh, yeah for that uh, conviction i didn't serve eight years but he went to attica and he was sentenced to eight years and uh you know he was a friend of mine when i was about what 16. do we do what do we do for all those people you know that got busted for pot and for selling pot and having a pound of pot and whatever uh who spent eight years in jail and now it's legal and they would never get that time in jail they wouldn't even come close to a judge would say don't bother me with this Okay. I think there is a judge in Oregon who wants to overturn all these well, marijuana. It, okay, yeah, it's great to overturn yeah. them, but I think that there's an additional yeah. factor here. I think they should get paid for for yeah. the in, inconvenience oh, it, 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 of it all. No, because it was illegal at the time. Well, uh, you to, I, I don't buy that. that some, something's illegal at one point, but it's not illegal at another point, and therefore whatever time they spent, they deserved well, I mean, you got bootleggers like. Ray? Uh, oh, go ahead, Ray. Ray. Yeah, it reminds me of the George Carlin joke where uh, with the Catholic Church, where there used to be a mortal sin to eat meat on Friday, and and then they and then they made it not a sin anymore, and they and he said, "There's still guys doing time in hell on the meat map." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never like those fish sticks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, again. But, you know, I mean, I, I just wonder about those people uh, who, who spent time in jail for uh, for pot. Uh, I mean, that that was one of the most victim. That was one of the most victim. Oh, you know, I got to tell you something. Uh, you want to talk about the fake press. OK, tonight yeah. I'm watching CBS Evening News with uh, uh, Lester Holt. Is this the five hundred thousand dollar thing? What? Uh, the, the oligarch that they're saying gave oh, no. uh, yeah. um, uh, Trump's attorney five hundred thousand no, uh, dollars. No, uh, 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 we wait until I tell the story before you try and tell me what story I'm trying to tell. All right. 
So he's doing his show from Colorado tonight. Each t- night he's in a different city. So they do stories about that town, that area. So he does a story about the police and people driving high on marijuana. Yeah. And it is the most skewed story I've ever seen. Because, for instance, he did not ask the cop the most obvious question you would ask. Uh, they say, well, you know, you, you bust a lot of people who are driving uh, high on, uh, on, on pot. And they go, oh, yes, uh, more now than ever before. Oh, yes. But he never asked him the other question, is it less for alcohol than it used to be? You know, and then he never brought up that there was an Oregon study. It's one of the most classic studies that was done years and years and years ago about driving under the influence of marijuana. And that an experienced marijuana user could drive under the influence of marijuana because it's one of the few drugs you can compensate 100% from, for the effects of. I, I tell you, that one time I had a puff. No, uh, no, no. Would you, no, I didn't. Did I just say that or did I say an experienced user? Right. Well, I wasn't. Uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I knew people I can. People can if they have a task to do, they, they studied this for driving and everything else, the task to do, and they're an experienced user, they've used pot for years and they know what it's like and so on and so forth, that you, it's one of the few drugs we have that you can compensate almost 100% for and do the task at hand. Well, some drunks can function also, uh, you know, we've, uh, I've, pulled over and not the uh, point arrested. I'm trying to make Phil what I'm trying the point I'm trying to make is that Lester Holt is a fucking douche oh. well, because, he, all because he never asked the right questions in this story and he he wanted he was just going to get a certain kind of story and, and that was the one he was fishing for and he wasn't going to ask any questions that would take it somewhere else the obvious question is if you now have people smoking pot number one do they drive better under the influence of it, even though you stop them and all of a sudden you smell, you know, the, the car smells like a skunk farm? Uh, or do you, uh, or, 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 or what, how, how does this differ from the arrests you used to have with alcohol and are there less alcohol arrests and more of the marijuana? And in which case, it's just inebriation that you're busting and it doesn't matter, there's, the same, there's no increase. But he didn't ask about an increase in DUIs. He also said it was harder to convict, too, because they don't have a good test. That's the one thing. He said it's harder to convict because they didn't have a blood test. Yeah. It goes further than that, though, too, because it depends on the strain of marijuana. If it's relatively low in THC, the psychoactivity is not going to even be very significant. um, Yeah, because that one guy they pulled over had only smoked, what, a half a joint or something. Yeah. And and it, yeah, and, and, it just and depends on how much too. THC. It depends on on your body's reaction. Actually, I think you well you can't you you can't do an immediate test on whether they're high off that drug or not. However, you can take a blood test and find out if they have THC in their system. But it right. takes three weeks to get out of your system, so that wouldn't hold up very well in court either. Right. That was the one point they made that was interesting. You know, is that it, there's no tried and true way that we can give people a test to see if they're high on pot right now, i'm thinking of uh up and smoke with uh cheech and chong you know if uh, i was the cop i would arrest those two <laughs> some, some of the things that we used to use was called nystagmus nystagmus is the involuntary eye bounce so you have them look, <laughs> you, if it's cold or high you have them look at a pen and you move it at an angle. Yeah, I and could, if and could you you bounce, could you use that test in court? Not anymore. No, then no. there's a reason but, why uh, because it's fruity science. Right, but that's my new term for fake science: fruity science. If you was a little bit more probable cause to ask more questions and to have them do more tests, even though you couldn't necessarily use it in court anymore, uh, they used to use it. And, but uh, they have these what they call uh, what do they call them drug uh, drug to these it. guys that go through the classes and they call them what drug recognition enforcement officers or whatever they have. I went through those same classes when I was uh, you know for for the DOT because I had to take those classes because I had truck drivers working under me and I had to recognize those same things and I went through three days eight hour classes and I had to 
be able to recognize it. They're almost the same damn classes, you know. So I had to be able to recognize somebody that was quote unquote high before they went out in a truck so, and started hauling hazmat all over the road. How yeah. did you recognize if they were high on pot? You couldn't. I mean, you could guess, but that's all you could do. And then say, okay, well, you go in and take a piss test. That's yeah. all you could do. Yeah, but you the know, piss test, all the, the same all, type all, of all, thing. All the piss test will do is tell whether they have pot in their system, and they could have smoked it oh, two, three weeks ago, uh, two, and it would be in their ago. system. Exactly, yeah. and that's the same thing that the cops are using today. Maybe there's a little more sophistication to it, but it's the same I, thing. I, it's I, a I guess. Would, I would just think that you could give a P test, and there would be some way in which you could uh, 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 find out uh, from that P test. Uh, how long ago they had gotten the most high. In other words, see if how much the concentration is. As a, because as weeks go on, it's got to diminish. You know what I'm you saying? Really, I, I don't know that you can because when I go get my meds for my doctor, they randomly take a piss test. They took one for me today just to get my meds. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've i gone in there, you know, I, I've taken a puff and I go and they say they're going to take a piss test. And I go, oh, crap. You know, I smoked two weeks ago and... It doesn't show up. They don't deny me my meds. So I'm going, okay, well, I guess it worked. I don't know. Hi, Renee. Uh, by the way, let and me just... Everybody let me, metabolizes let me, let me, everything differently, too. Yeah. But it, yeah. No, nobody metabolizes anything in the same way as another person. Yeah. So you really don't have any idea how long it's been. Yeah. Hey, Renee, are you on the big island? Yeah. No. No? Stop. Yeah, she's no, on the big island. Lost. She's on the big have island. Have you heard from the... Uh, Who's the other guy over there on Hilo? Yeah, we, heard from, we heard from him on Dan, Friday. You heard, heard from him? We heard from him on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, We're all fine. Anybody want an update? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Sure. I used to own land. So, but I, 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 you know, let's get an update in a second because I just wanted to continue sure. with this a second. Yeah. Uh, you it, it's just they should be able to scientifically fit, come up with a test that tells, like, did you just do it within the last couple of hours? Because is there the strength in your body of that amount? Because it's got to get weak after a couple of weeks, you know, uh, even though it's still in your system. Um, you would think. So, I mean, but, I mean, I just, I just uh, uh, again, you know, uh, we have a, uh, let me say this. We have a, a, a government that is completely out of whack with what the states are doing. The states are legalizing marijuana at an amazing clip, okay? And the government is still saying, uh, we won't let you take uh, money into your banks uh, from these pot places, and we're still going to arrest people if we want to, and blah, 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 blah. And it's, it, you know, it, it creates a, uh, a, a disunity in the country where you don't know what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, and um, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, uh, terrible what's going on. And, Just thank Phil for that. Huh? You can thank Phil for that. Yeah, it's delightful. Yeah. It's a republic. It's a state state right thing. It, it is a state it right thing, but somehow right the Republicans thing. don't believe in states' rights until uh, they want to go in and tell the state they can't do well, something. I thought the nanny state was created by the Democrats. No, we're not talking about nanny state, Phil. We're talking about you know this, you know you want to make sure that they don't hurt themselves and they're not smoking this marijuana no and, that's what you're doing by going into a state and telling them they can't smoke that marijuana when jeff sessions says he's still going to prosecute marijuana you know well, that's okay. so, so then, two points was yeah. point number one some states and or counties have already said if you're in jail for pot excuse me that's the old people saying it if you're in jail for weed uh, we're letting you out. We don't want you in there for weed anymore. And so now they're not even putting people in for weed and they're releasing the people. The problem is, is exactly what Alex is saying. N not the entire United States because just last year, some little, I shouldn't say little, some black person in New Orleans, young black man, got 30 years for 30 ounces of pot. Mm. Uh, and and it, 30 it, yeah. years for 30 ounces of pot that's disgusting yeah. what are you doing the there is, what is uh, ray doing is there a schedule one drug <laughs> famous heroin <laughs> Look at what Ray's doing. They, they've got to change that so that uh researchers uh can research they don't have these rules in israel israel is the leader in uh 
uh, the health effects of uh, cannabis now. Really? You know? Oh yeah, yeah. The Israelis are like way ahead of everybody. Oh, so you should be looking to them. Oh, for... they should get that fucking Netanyahu high. <laughs> that might be a good start. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's you know in in a uh, an aged home. He's eighty five. Yeah. And he says he was in pain. He had a neck operation, and he got cannabis oil, uh, uh, some sort of pill that you take. And he says, it, I said, did it, you know, is it making a difference? And he says, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Marijuana is a very medicinal uh, thing. Listen, I want to go to another subject because I, 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 I was doing a little promo for this show. <laughs> and and I say, saw that. saying that we would talk about it. And I, I really think we should. But first, let's get a quick uh, update on what's oh. happening on the Big Island and their volcano that hates them. Uh, well, first off, Pele and Madam Pele is going to do what Madam Pele wants to do. So the good news is, is that every other island is fine. So if you're coming to Hawaii, don't don't worry about it. Every Kauai, the big or uh, Oahu, Maui, Maui looks really good this week. So everybody's fine. Even on this island, on this end, we're all good. So the only thing really being affected is the area that horrifically affected is the area south of Hilo and to almost to the point. Those, that's where the volcano is. So we've heard people talking about uh, people canceling, uh, not wanting to come. It, you know what? You just go to the other side of the island. This is a very large island, and so there's at least a week's worth of stuff to do without having to go to the Pune area. Right. And, and, and next time you come to Hawaii and think about living there, do as Renee did. Don't build your home near a volcano, okay? The whole island's a volcano. Uh, yeah, well... Yeah. Uh, uh, we've just been joined by somebody named Todd. Is this somebody we know? Yes. How you doing? Long time no speak. Todd Moore, the truck driver. Oh, right. Oh, How are you, Todd? Yeah. Good talking to you. Uh, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, you can join in on the discussion anytime you want to, Todd. Just yell out the words, Todd. Uh, today, the president did something, which the Iran deal. Oh, my God. Uh, it, it, we are not just pulling out. That would be a bad term. Reneging is the, is, the, is the really legal term for this, in that we are going back on a, a promise that we made. And uh, this does not speak well to the rest of the world. It, within his own ranks, uh, 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 Mad Dog Mattis doesn't think it's a good idea. The head of the CIA... Uh, 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 former head of the CIA, is now our Secretary of State. Uh, he said he thinks they've been complying just fine. Uh, everybody seems to be disagreeing with him except uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, and there was one other person somewhere. Otherwise, we have just lost our fucking credibility and our word. How are we going to make... Uh, um, how are we going to make uh, uh, peace in this world and make deals in this world if nobody will feel we'd follow through on them? But, you know, we've done this before. Uh, Baby Bush broke the ABM treaty. Uh, you know, just said, hey, we're pulling out of it. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it's but, the same but, crowd uh, that are calling the shots behind the stupid puppet well, that calls himself a president. He, he's a dumb shit. Well, he, he well, doesn't well, know well, any the, of the, 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 That real yeah. downside of all of this is they can start ramping yeah. up doing nukes now. Yeah. Yes, P uh, Phil. Uh, this was a promise that uh, Bush, not Bush, Trump made. Mm -hmm. uh, on the campaign trail. That's right. And, so, and yeah, what, what's what's more important, the promise to his minions uh, of, of a minority in this country or our word to the rest of the world and our promise to the rest of the world? I understand that Party before country. I understand that there are consequences that might have to be paid. Uh, the Israelis are already preparing for an invasion. Uh, they're opening up... <laughs> Uh, well, no, and uh, they've the always been prepared for an invasion. Yeah, well, anyway. Jeff, you've been there, haven't you? Twice. They're always prepared for an invasion, aren't they? Yes. What What Trump did is what he said he was going to do. It's no surprise. Why is everybody surprised? Well, because we thought maybe he'd come to his senses once he saw the reality of the situation and had world leaders begging him not to do it. That That was the deal. 
No, uh, no, just French, keep, uh, keep, keep, Cree, keeping yeah, promises yeah. that you make while you're running for president and don't have full knowledge of the of the uh, uh, of the promise you're making. Uh, you know, you get into the White House, you learn things you didn't know before, and apparently yeah, so he's learned of, so nothing. At the end of his uh, term, when he walks away eight years later and tells oh. everybody, "Yeah, no, I, fu I, I, well, but, I fucked up everything, but I yeah. kept my promise. That's going to be good." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now, his popularity is uh, is the highest it's been. Yeah, now oh, it's a three. On. It's a three oh, instead of a four instead uh, of a two. Between forty four, depending yeah. on the survey, it's between forty four and fifty percent. How can you Say, defend that idiot? Fucked everything up. I, mean, I promised you, I fucked everything up, and yeah, well, I kept I, my promise. Okay. But I kept everybody, my promises. Everybody needs to repeat after me. This is the mantra now: party before country. Well, that's the Democratic. Every, everything that he oh, does bullshit. is going to be party before country. Well, I would uh, modify that and say class before any, everything else. You know, they, we're back. talking about billionaires no, and rule by corporations. That's what the United yeah. States has become. Yep. You know, just like you could break a fucking corporate contract, that's the way but the how is he? How is he going to go to, for instance, right now, uh, the Chinese are uh, kind of uh, uh, bothered by this decision by the United States. How is he going to go into North Korea, try and make a deal on denuclearization, which is essentially the same kind of treaty, and, right. and, be, and, and have them sit there and say, well, you're good to your word? No. Yeah, good point, Alex. That's really a good point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The board, but he did. But he didn't. He kept his promise to his uh, to his uh, you know idiots out on the on the on the on the stump, you know. Yeah. He couldn't even keep his promises to his the, wife, his wedding vow. <laughs> <laughs> See, Stormy Daniels, you know, those those are pretty big tits. I'm actually starting to feel sorry for Bologna. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yes, uh, Ray Renati. Does, does any does anyone know why Not he really, gets? But I... <laughs> why he gets to make this decision unilaterally like this? What, do, yeah, why does he true. get to yeah. make? Why? Yeah, because the Republicans are just bending over because. Because he's a fucking Trump. No, Fool. but I mean, so be, it would we would take the Congress to stop him. Is that what it what it would be? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. they're not going to do that. He knows it. So he's just going to go ahead and make. We've been joined by Jack Bishop, oh. by the way. Todd. Uh, there, Todd. Hello there. Todd. Are you there, Todd? Yes. Do you have anything you want to say about the subject? Oh, man, I don't even know where to begin, sir. Oh, whew, God, buddy, you gave me a lot. Um, well, the um, thing I would say with um, Trump and what he wants to do, and he, I think really he's just um, trying to listen to Israel and he's trying to do what he wants to do and try to, that's why I can put it is, you know, you got all the Stormy Daniels and stuff. He's trying to, like, you know, smoke screen. He's like a showman. So he's trying to showman. He, he, he tried to do it with North Korea and realized that might have been a bad idea. So yeah. He's yeah. trying to do it with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, yes, Jack. Hey, I want to know, when are the Iranians going to start calling for uh, regime change in the United States? Last mm -hmm. week, Trump was calling for regime change years. over there. They've been calling for it for years. You no, death, haven't. Or, uh, death to yeah. Israel. When? Put a date on it. When, Phil? When? Uh, since since they took over the embassy. But uh, Alex has a full house. Oh, that was that mm. was, oh, that was more than f almost forty years ago. Damn. Phil, that was almost 40. That was I hate almost doing that math. Years ago. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter if it was 40 years ago. And, the, and, and, and you know, and you know what we blew it on that when we because you had an administration that you know a dishonest administration elected by dishonest Republicans. Uh, are you saying that Reagan was dishonest? Hell yes! Oh my God, he was. Totally dishonest. You've ever had. Hey, if you want to want to talk about broken treaties, yeah, uh, the U.S. government made five. Hundred treaties with Native Americans, yeah. and guess how many they broke? Break, all of them, all five hundred. I wish I had a. That too. 
I wish I had a native a uh, native Hawaiian here. They could probably you know oh, yeah. get into that too. They yeah, fuck I mean, these people the, over. The queen got screwed by uh, uh, CNH Sugar and mm -hmm. the Marines. You know. And the Marines standing outside yeah. her. It's a very famous yeah. photo. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 100 days. She was a badass. The Iranians need to be calling for regime change in this country, bringing freedom and democracy back to this great country. I was. I heard a thing that they said 90% of the Iranians aren't happy with the way the government is being run, that it's the mullahs in Iran that are... Uh, being so hard-lined. Well, actually, what I hear is even worse, though, is that they really don't like the current uh, prime minister they have, or whatever they call the head of their country, uh, because of these deals he made with the United States. And this may actually get him pushed out. So we have a much unfriendlier person at the helm of that country. I, on, the, on the contrary, you may have a much friendlier no, person. No, that, no, no. Why? 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 A what? better... Why? The, the very people that want him out are the people that, that want to replace him with somebody who's more of a hardliner. Uh, yeah. I, don't don't the, go, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, this, I'm talking facts here, Phil. Yeah, well, that's the 10% that are the hardliners that are in charge Yes, right but well, the fact is they're going to get a grip on the country because they have not been very happy with Rouhani is his name, I think, who's, yeah. who's, who's the prime minister of, uh, of, yeah. of Iran. And he has taken, you know, a let's get along with the West attitude, and they don't like that. And this is their excuse now to throw him out and install their own guy who's going to be a, a hard ass. Well, okay. you, you guys, and then you they're going to say, are you, are you, you reneged on your deal? Okay, then we're reneging on the deal, and we're going to start building these weapons again. S some, uh, some of you yeah, might sorry. disagree with me, but I think the balancing key... And this whole situation is Russia. I, I am happy what, to see Russia what. involved in, in the Middle East now, especially uh, that hotbed region of uh, Syria and uh, Iran. Uh, they're going to keep the peace. Uh, they did in Syria when uh, this uh, uh, the first... Uh, wait a minute, the uh, Russians you know, kept the Powell peace? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. The Russians wait a minute, second. got the, wait a Syria the, the, to, uh, the Russians... Are making Syria a better place? Have you seen so, what's happening over there? The Russians are keeping uh, a balance of power and a stability in that region. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a, how. How like, are, yeah. Assad and power. Are you? Are, well, are, you, are we talking about this? Are we talking about, about the same Assad country? Syria is coming up by the. John, US are we press. talking about the same country? Yeah, we are. Oh well, because the Syria that I see doesn't look like it's uh, doing very well. Hey, I'm not a, a, a Putin lover. My, my buddies in Greenpeace were uh, imprisoned for six months uh, on the Polar Pioneer a few yeah, years ago. Yeah, the, but the Americans did the same thing to you. So, you know, what the hell. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Jeff, did you have anything to say about this? you have anything to say about this? I just wanted to draw you in the conversation. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm very disappointed what uh, Trump is is doing or, or claiming to do or ultimately I'm going to do it in two two months or whatever. Uh, I think it's a bad deal. I, I think it's a, a reasonable good deal to keep what we have. Yeah. And, uh, and anybody who's not doing that is crazy. Well, our Secretary of State, the new one, uh, what's, it was with the CIA, Said they yeah. they were living yeah. up to the agreement. He says they I were living up to the agreement. Did, Mad Dog Mattis say says they were living up to the agreement. Uh, um, uh, our old Secretary of State, uh, because John they changed. Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, Tillerson oh. also Tillerson. said they were living up to their uh, to their right. part of the bargain. So the only person that doesn't think they think they were living up to the part of the bargain is Donald Trump and his little suck off pal uh, Netanyahu. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, uh, Jack. Gary was, Jack. was very willing to uh, accept the, the relationship as it exists today. Yeah. Jack? And what does this do to our credibility around the world as far as being a diplomatic party? How do you, and, and how do you go into, so how do you go into the meeting with, Chum, uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Un, uh, Kim Jong-un, and and have him to expect that anything you say you will live up to. Tell yeah. me how he's going to do that, Phil. 
Yeah, I'll tell you how he's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to show him how strong we are, and he's going to oh, show yeah. Kim yeah. Jong Un. And that's going to scare him? Show him how strong we are. Step out into the Rose Garden with two nine millimeters and blow each other's son of a bitch in the heads off. That's the real American way. It's Jack. Her- to bring back dueling like he used to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Hamilton. Burr. Yeah, most yep. of the Western world has said that they want to keep the agreement in place because people don't like change. What Trump is saying is, hey, it was a bad deal. And what was who are you who are you reading from, Phil? Better. Who are you reading what's from? Plan B? Who, what, who, oh, they don't have a plan B. Who's, plan like who's so talking? Who's ta- who, wait a minute, hold on a second. What, Phil, what Phil, so Phil, 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 whose talking points are you reading right now? None. Basically. You were looking down, you were reading something, Phil. I wasn't reading Fox anything. News. Limbaugh's. <laughs> no, I wasn't You're reading, reading anything. Fox News. Yeah. Stop. So you have Fox. Fox News. So number one, this, if I may, Ray said, what's the plan B? They didn't yeah. have a plan B for health care, and they railed about it for seven years, and they still didn't, when they got in charge, have a plan B. There is no plan B, Ray. This is not, it's just not. They don't have any good ideas. He's just the big jackass like Trump, we think he is. Trump no, believes but, in, uh, in uh, power, uh, strength through power. False, and false, a, false power. And, false and, power. And where does and, that get the world, Phil? Where does strength and power get the whole damn world? Never forget this, my fellow American. The only country with a history of using atomic weapons is which one? Hey, the a bulletin of atomic scientists have the doomsday clock at two minutes before midnight. And I'm looking, scrolling down, you know, it was uh, uh, 12, 10, 9, 3, uh, 84... 90, it was 10 minutes. 91, it was 17. 98, 9 minutes. 2002, 7. 2007, 5. 2010, 6. 2012, 5. 2015, 3. 2016, 3. Now, today, uh, 2018, 2 minutes. You need to watch. What is that? Phil is the doomsday happy. clock from the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. 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 Carpet deal to, to carpet your bomb shelter. <laughs> John, I, I don't believe that there's going to be any uh, atomic war because I believe that Trump is going to make sure that these guys do not develop a, an atomic system. How is he going to do that? How is he going to do that? Is he going to go out himself sure and like he is uh, going to put sh- sanctions on them to the point that that they'll put all those sanctions on us and we won't have trade with anybody in the so world we won't get pistachios from iran uh, and, you well, know it's gonna hurt the rug business too you know airy rugs are going to be going up in price well, you won't be able to get those history rugs. of aggression in this country with this our world, history of yes. aggression in this country smaller powers are going to say hey to at least come to the table i better have something that puts a uh mushroom cloud over a city yeah, yeah so they're gonna yeah. all start looking the, yeah and all you're doing is pissing people off people don't just stand down yeah, just because right, we right. we're the big strong people on the block they fight That's harder false well, they, power they did for reagan but the what? Uh, they didn't stand what? down for Reagan. who stood down for reagan he bankrupted the ussr no he didn't bankrupt the ussr yeah, afghanistan it, did Star wars uh, Af- Star- yeah, exactly, <laughs> Afghanistan did. Very good, Scott. You know, nobody's going to drop an atomic bomb on anybody else. If if anything, what a nuke will be used for in today's world is an air uh, uh, a stratosphere burst, a blowout. Every single fucking satellite uh, 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 spinning around the world, including the International Space Station, and everything. Korea can do that. Uh, other other small nations can do, that. can do that. That will screw up everything more than blowing up Banking. somebody's city or anything. It's well, there goes there, so go, there, there goes your cell phone communication. It's going to yeah. go the show. <laughs> it's going to be suitcase. About about EMP. suitcase. Yeah. What, what did you say? Yeah. Ta- Wait a minute. Todd said something. What, Todd? Sorry. You, he's talking about an EMP. EMT right. burst. Yeah. EMT right. burst. Yeah, well, EMT. Well, plus, it's going to kill. 
It's going to kill every satellite in orbit. Every satellite. Well, there's banking. Satellites. Yeah. There's banking. Yeah. There's your phone system. There's just your medical records. Your EMS dispatchers. Your we're all going to be just floating. And, and, that presupposes, and that presupposes that everybody's going to play by that rule. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What were you saying, Phil? You did want to go back to a simpler time. Yes. Uh, no, yes. no, 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 no. That's the white males wishing that. The rest of us are forward thinking. What do you mean white males? What I'm kind sorry, of sexist remark is that? I, you know what? I <laughs> should have said that's what those women do. white males is what that, I really that, 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 That's those uppity women. <laughs> yeah, bitch ass. And you mean Jack yeah. is fine because he's black? You're making that distinction? Uh, well... Hmm. Jack oh, yeah. didn't vote for Trump. Well, neither he did I. Vote for Trump? No, 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 no. Jack did not vote for Trump. <laughs> no, Jack oh, did okay. not vote for There's Trump. Another black guy here too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and be sure and, and be sure and catch the other black guy in about seven minutes with his own program. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you Trump, go. Trump had a speech today. And he had these black guys standing behind them that had T-shirts on that said "Black Guys for Trump," you know. Hey, they, their black card got canceled right then and there. Oh, did you <laughs> see that? Uh -huh. yes, it did. That uh, you know what I, what I do is I sometimes I turn on Fox and uh, uh, Fox News, and this big fat black guy who's doing Fox News and speaking the right wing agenda. And I'm yeah, saying to myself, didn't somebody just slap this guy once and say, "Hey, yes. you're just you're not in you're not working in your best interest, what? asshole." He's an economist, isn't he? He's got a job. He's happy. That guy's <laughs> that, that's the problem. Is and, exactly and, what he just said. And, He's got a job. He and doesn't us, care about the responsibility. And let us. I was born. I was born a poor black child. Oh really? Yeah, right. Seriously, right. boy, wow, you took that really? Michael Jackson turn really quickly. <laughs> hey, you could have been an understudy. No, but his Steve problem Martin was the jerk, Ray. The problem yeah, was when when Ray, when Ray went into the when Ray went into the sun, he bleached. Hey, hey so, no, we're not. Getting, okay, so no talk about anybody's special purpose. That's cut off. <laughs> right. Let's, I got to ring the bell for that one for Renee. What did I that I did a movie <laughs> reference? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. He's got a little belly rings, folks, on his show. You know what? How does it? How is it that like some people Trump makes them feel secure and safe, and then others of us Trump makes us feel scared shitless? <laughs> it's the fake media. No, seriously, no. Without just saying it's the fake media. I mean, really, what is that psychological? What is going on there? I mean, because Phil feels secure with Trump in office, right. and the rest of us feel like really scared about him. Do you want a serious answer or bullshit? Yeah, serious. I'm serious. I'm, I'm being serious. There are, all right. There are always people who think with their reptilian brain that that that's not serious. From a, that functions from a position of fear. That's not serious. A, a serious answer would be that there are some people that don't believe that Trump is on the right path and there are others that do. And you're always going to have. Uh, I think you, look, if you and those away. and those that think he's on the right path are troglodytes. Yeah, well, that, well, see, that, draggers, as we call them on my program. Yeah, we used uh, to call them racist too. Also, yeah. racist. Those yeah. are the racist. talking points that the well, DNC is giving you guys, and those are the ones. That yeah, you I get my talking points. They send them to me every day. They send them to me every day. I get this whole long hey, list from hey, the we DNC. We telepathically are linked, and it comes in our coffee cup every morning. And every then, every Trump supporter I know, except for maybe you, Phil, is definitely a racist, whether they want to admit it or not. That's and if right. I know them well, I know they're definitely racist, even if they won't say they are. Right. I know I, from their behavior. I know them well. And they're racist, I'm almost sure. always. Well, yeah, you know, well, sometimes we should be considered racist you know if, you know people uh, can say they don't like the color of your shirt and they're saying that that's uh, a prejudice you know uh if you're wearing new balance i know exactly what you are no i i wear mon uh, monofestos i think uh, yeah a 400 dollar <laughs> pair of shoes instead well, what of if you're sagging i wear anything like, that's, what if your pants are sagging? at my age i wear anything yeah, that's comfortable i know what i know why people's pants sag now their diapers are full. 
I believe oh, it's somewhere that's what you're saying. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, listen, it's time to go, folks. The theme is is a running, and uh, so is uh, Jack Bishop's got to go. So I'm going to hang up on you, Jack, so you can go do your show. Dude. Okay. He's up next with Amy uh, Amy Fisher. No, Amy uh, uh, Emanuel. <laughs> And Joey Buttafuoco. Hey, yes. you had a full house tonight. I know we did. I wow. know. Yeah. yeah. I feel Much real good day. about that. Anyway, uh, nice. I want to thank Phil Meyer for being with us. Thank you, Phil. I cool. want to thank Jeff Stein for being with us and John Perulis for being with us. And Renee, I'm glad the volcano didn't get you. Uh, <laughs> Scott Boddicker, thank you fun. so much. You've been uh, real good tonight. And uh, Kevin? Always a pleasure to have you here, Ray Renati. Uh, you know, all of you. I love you. And, to and Todd, I, call more I, often, I, okay? Who's the phone I guy? I will definitely try. Yeah, it's Todd. Todd. Anyway. Uh, tell him to call Jack's show. Yeah, call Jack's show after we're over here. Anyway, uh, uh, everybody, uh, give a big uh, big wave goodbye to our audience, and we'll see you hopefully again tomorrow. That's our Citizens Panel, folks, and uh, that's our show for tonight. Thanks to the Citizens Panel and to all the members of it. And, uh, you know, go over to gabnet.net and you can find out how you can also be a member of the Citizens Panel. We would love to uh, have you do that. In the meantime, uh, I, Jack and Amy are next. And then right after that, at midnight, at 1 o'clock in the morning, rather, Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. And then we'll be back here again uh, tomorrow night after Damien. Uh, and the uh, chaplain and the exchange at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, should you happen upon her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.